Welcome back to part six, guys. This is Tex again, and I hope you've been enjoying this orbiter tutorial series. Uh, but we got to the International Space Station and we docked in the last part. So what we need to do now is we need to figure out how the heck we get back to Cape Canaveral. So before we begin, I really hate to do this to you. Um, as a beginner, I tried to avoid you having to install a bunch of add-ons. But unfortunately, you really do need a couple of MFD add-ons in order to do this properly. What I don't want to do is like fly by the seat of our pants because we are going to use the default delta glider. So in in a sense, we are going to have to fly by the seat of our pants because it doesn't have an autopilot for reentry, which really kind of sucks. But on the other hand, it's also kind of fun to attempt to manually fly a reentry. It's not realistic, but we're going to make it as realistic as we can, and uh, these add-on MFDs will help us do that. Uh, it'll take a lot of the guesswork out of re-entering and it, once you understand what's going on with these MFDs and how to use them You'll really appreciate uh, you'll really appreciate these add-ons. They're really great add-ons and um, It'll really help you get a better grasp of the whole re-entry and landing process So I'll put the links to them in the description below. They are the base sync MFD glide slope M MFD and also the module messaging MFD which allows those two to communicate with each other so you have to install those three. They're, they're in an archive, they're like a zip archive. You just extract them into your Orbiter directory wherever you installed Orbiter. All right, once you've done that, go to your Orbiter directory and uh, go inside the config folder. Go to MFD folder and finally go to glide slope folder. What we need to do is we need to edit the glide slope DG config file, open it with notepad or something you can edit it with. I have notepad++, it's a free download. You can Google it. Um, anyway, scroll down and you need to edit these three lines. You need to put yours here the same as mine. So this one needs to be 108. This is for altitudes. This one needs to be 104. This one needs to be 100. This isn't perfect, but uh, I did some experimenting and the default settings in this glide slope for the Delta Glider uh, does not work. Um, so anyway, uh, go ahead and edit that, save it, and then uh, close that out and uh, fire up Orbiter. Uh, once you do that, go to the Modules tab and you need to enable those MFDs that you installed. So look for Base Sync and check it so that it's enabled. Same thing with Glide Slope. This MFD is not required, but I've put the link in the description below. It's called Load MFD. Uh, I'm gonna use that just for realism purposes. It's gonna put uh, the G loading that the vessel is currently experiencing on the screen so that we can keep that within realistic values. Uh, so if you install that, make sure that's enabled as well, and we're good to go. I'm going to load our to, uh, scenario where we left off, and we literally just docked with ISS, so we, we haven't been here very long at all technically, but we're going to be here for a little while because we need to hang out until we find uh, an appropriate landing window. So let's go ahead and figure out how we do that. Jump into the cockpit, press F8. I'm doing this just for the glass view so you guys can see the MFDs better. Uh, map MFD, let's target Cape Canaveral. Alright, that's done. Uh, let's open up one of our new toys. Uh, press select to go to page 2 if you need to. Uh, find um, Base Sync, sorry, and click on Base Sync. Alright, so we need to target Cape Canaveral. You have to type that in, Cape Canaveral. And uh, you'll see Cape Canaveral is targeted right there across the top. Make sure closest passage is selected. It should be by default, but if not, press the encounter button right there on the bottom left until it reads closest passage. Also make sure direct is selected. Press the E slash D button to switch between equator and direct. Again, that should be selected by default. If not, make sure MFD is set up just like mine. All right, so what we're looking at here is we have a list of orbits so the number one is our current orbit and we're looking eight orbits into the future and we're trying to find the closest passage uh, by Cape Canaveral for us to land there so in other words we're looking at our orbital plane when does our orbital plane take us near the base uh, by default if I press the cycle button we can look 16 orbits into the future uh, we can actually increase the number of orbits we're looking into the future up to 99. So for example, if I put in 50 and I hit cycle, it just cycles through the different pages. So now the best solution, which uh, is indicated by the, uh, the orbit that's highlighted in white, uh, is 39 orbits into the future. Uh, so that's, uh, 
that's one way that you can really look far into the future and find a, uh, a good landing window. Personally, I, I find it's frustrating when you look that far into the future because sometimes you'll find, let's say, uh, we have a, a solution that's uh, on the sixth orbit here, and we're looking 50 orbits into the future, and then all of a sudden another solution uh, that's better than this one is found 50 orbits in the future, but I don't want to wait that long, for example, then it just gets confusing and frustrating switching through all these pages of solutions. Um, so I'm actually just going to set this to 8. So that way we only have one page of solutions to worry about. And that gives us more than enough time to find a solution and actually um, plan our deorbit and everything. All right, so with just eight orbits looking into the future, right now the best solution is on the fourth orbit. Let's take a look at the map MFD. And you can see it's actually night at uh, Cape Canaveral right now. Personal preference, but I want to land during the day. So that means when on the fourth orbit, when this closest passage, this best solution comes up, it'll still be night at KAC. So I'm not going to take that, but let me speed time up uh, so that that... Uh, that best solution actually gets around to the current orbit and we'll get over there by Cape Canaveral so I can show you a couple of things here. So you'll notice on the map MFD here we come around to our closest passage. Let me hit track and zoom. Alright so here we are uh, moving along and our closest passage is approaching. Zoom in one more time maybe two more there we go alright so um, you can see right here that the distance off from the base is 243.72 kilometers so what that's telling us is that from the base to our closest passage right here that perpendicular distance is 243.73 kilometers now that's not really that terrible um, we could easily correct that in the atmosphere during re-entry uh, but we also have the option of uh, doing a plane change burn while we're in orbit if we have fuel to do so and uh, bring this down to a, an even closer pass so that perhaps our orbital plane crosses directly over the base. Uh, so similar, you know, the way we did when we were taking off, we sat on the ground and waited for ISS's orbital plane to cross over our launch site. Uh, this is kind of similar. We're waiting for, you know, our orbital plane to cross near the launch site anyway. Uh, over here, this is telling me the time in seconds. I do have the, the simulation slowed down to a very slow rate so that I can explain things at the moment. But this is counting down in seconds until we reach the encounter point. Uh, and so the encounter point is basically it's our closest passage by the base. So it'd be about right here. And that's actually illustrated by this bold yellow line on the uh, on the MFD. So that bold yellow line is referring to the uh, encounter point on your uh, on your best solution orbit. Also you have heading here so this is telling us the bearing uh, from our, our encounter point to the base. So our encounter point, our closest passage at the encounter point is right here. So the bearing from that point to the base is 311 degrees. So that is that information uh, in this list of orbits here. And uh, again, the one with the best solution with the closest pass will always be highlighted in white. Uh, over here on this side, you have some, uh, some parameters listed. You have uh, latitude and longitude of your targeted base. If you wanted to land on a moon, for example, that doesn't have a base or whatever, you could actually click that to enter manual uh, latitude and longitude coordinates for uh, for landing there. Uh, this is our uh, equatorial inclination, so it's our, our inclination in the equatorial frame of reference. Uh, you could also see that on the orbit MFD. We've covered that before. Uh, this is the heading to the base. This is our ground speed. This is the distance to the base, so currently we are 800 kilometers from the base. And uh, this is our altitude over the encounter point. Over here we have some stuff that looks familiar from the aligned plane MFD. We have relative inclination, longitude of the ascending node, time to the node. Uh, this is a burn time in seconds for aligning our orbital plane, or, or in other words, reducing our relative inclination. And this is the delta velocity that would actually uh, be required to lower our relative inclination. 
So all of this data here is referring to your best solution. So the, uh, the orbit that's highlighted in white. So for this current one, if we wanted to bring our relative inclination down, of course it's too late now because we're right by the base, but uh, whatever, whatever one is highlighted in white, if you wanted to bring your relative inclination down to zero, this gives you, you know, information on what it would be required. So let me actually uh, speed time up. We'll pass this encounter point. So now the next best solution. All right, so now the next best solution is uh, on our fifth orbit, and uh, it's not actually that great. We're missing the base by 733 kilometers. So what we could do is uh, we could do a plane change burn to bring this uh, distance down so that we're not missing the base by so much. Uh, but what this is telling us, if we wanted to do that at either of the two nodes, here's the dash line of nodes. So this is a node here and this is a node here. We are currently here, so the next possible place we could do a plane change burn if we coast around this direction to this node over here. Um, this is telling us that uh, we would have to burn our engines for almost 40 seconds facing anti-normal, so we'd orient the vessel anti-normal for that burn at this node here. Uh, and it would take about 886 seconds of delta velocity. So that's quite a bit of uh, quite a bit of fuel and burn time to you know to align your plane with the base. Uh, instead of wasting fuel and doing all of that, uh, we could just coast around and wait until a better solution you know uh, pops up. Because I, I suspect if we just sit here in orbit, it costs us nothing but time to just sit here and and just wait and let's see what solutions we get offered in the future. But you know, this just gives you information that uh, you can do a plane change burn to uh, bring your closest pass down uh, by the base to a nice uh, close pass. Uh, so we'll, we'll just time accelerate and let's see what happens. You'll notice that uh, it is still night at Cape Canaveral, but by the time this closest passage moves up to uh, the current orbit, it will be daytime. So uh, if we wanted to land at daytime, we could take this, but again, you know, we'd have to do a little bit of plane change burn to bring that closer down to a you know a closer pass. All right, let's uh, just keep time accelerating. We'll pass that solution. Let's see what the next one is. All right, so the next best solution is eight orbits away, and that's terrible. That's 1,300 kilometers off the base. Now eight orbits away, we're down to about 400 kilometers from the base, but this one will occur at night. It's daytime at Cape Canaveral, so by the time that comes around, uh, it'll be nighttime again, so we're not going to take that one either. So just be patient. Let this one come and go. And uh, so the next closest pass will probably occur during the daytime after we let this one go. Uh, there's a really good one actually. So this one is within 30 or so kilometers of the base. That's really close. Of course our orbit is being perturbed so it won't stay right on that initial uh, prediction right now, but that's the best solution we've seen thus far and because it's eight orbits into the future and it's nighttime at Cape Can Canaveral right now, uh, this will occur during the daytime. So I believe this will be the solution that we take. So that means we've only been at ISS for maybe a day and a half or so. I forgot exactly what the date was when we docked, but we haven't been here very long and we're gonna go ahead and shove off. But uh, let's, uh, let's just coast around until this best solution moves up to the second orbit and then we will undock. And I'll go ahead and do a plane change uh, burn just to demonstrate that, um, but this is more than close enough that we really don't need to do a plane change burn we could just uh, correct that in the atmosphere as we're re-entering we would essentially just um, we would essentially just bank over you know one direction in order to bring our trajectory more toward the base so anyway um, alright so we are two orbits away uh, from actually uh, landing back at Cape Canaveral uh, let's go ahead and undock we can press control D Linear RCS is on, so we will translate back with 9 on the numpad. Get some distance between us and ISS. Good enough. Press K to close the nose cone. 
And while I'm thinking about it, let's make sure everything else is closed for re-entry. Retro doors, we don't need those. Close those. All right, everything else looks good. Back to the glass cockpit. And all right, so what we need to do, if we want to do a plane change burn to bring our closest passage down, uh, the next opportunity is at this node here. And uh, we are here moving toward that node. So we have just over a thousand seconds until we reach that node. It's only going to take uh, almost nine seconds of burn time, 198 meters per second. That's not very much at all to bring relative inclination with uh, Cape Canaveral down to zero. So let's uh, time accelerate until we are about 60 seconds out from the node. Okay. All right, so this is telling us we need to burn anti-normal right here, so we will activate the anti-normal autopilot. I'll press H to bring up the orbit HUD. That will be more useful to us. Wave goodbye to the crew there on the International Space Station. We're going to leave them behind in just a moment after this burn. All right, and the same as we did on the Align Plane MFD, when time to node reaches half of our burn time, that's when we'll burn, uh, burn our main engines, of course, oriented in the appropriate direction, anti-normal in this instance. So roughly when time to node reaches about four and a half seconds or so, we'll go ahead and burn our main engines. We'll watch relative inclination count down as we're burning towards zero. You can also watch the distance for the closest passage will get closer to zero as that burn occurs. So here we go, and we're burning. Relative inclination is coming down. We'll just focus on getting that on zero. Notice that uh, closest passage is decreasing as well. Pull back on the thrust. All right, there we go. That's as good as uh, really needs to be. So we're missing the base by a mere 100 meters. And again, it won't stay exactly there, but we're not worried about that one bit. So that's good enough. And that's how you do it. We had more than enough fuel to do that, so why not? All right, so the final thing we need to do, uh, at least in this part of the video, I'm going to split this up into two videos because it just got too long to do one video for deorbit reentry and landing. So we're going to cover the, uh, the landing uh, window and uh, deorbit. So let's go ahead and plan our deorbit now. What we need to do is coast around to our final orbit, so let's uh, watch our radius vector come around here and we'll get past the uh, encounter point uh, indicated on the base sync MFD here, this yellow line. As soon as our radius vector passes that, and our best solution here is indicated on the first orbit, we'll go ahead and slow time down and plan our deorbit burn. Okay. There we go. All right, so first of all, I'm just going to press number and put in 1 because we don't care about any other orbits but this current orbit we're on. We're going to take this solution. So we don't need to see all that other stuff. Uh, let's go ahead and open the uh, Glide Slope MFD. All right, so the first thing we need to do over here is we need to hit Config. Make sure base is set to Cape Canaveral. It should be by default. You can cycle through the bases by clicking previous base or next base. It'll list all the bases uh, on Earth and they're in alphabetical order. So just go until you find Cape Canaveral. Then we need to set the runway. You can click previous runway, next runway. It'll cycle through all of the runways and landing pads at that base. I'm going to choose runway 33. It's the longest runway there. You can see the length at 5,131 meters. Uh, you could also choose runway 15. It's the opposite end of runway 33. Uh, then we need to set uh, GS where it says here XR series by clicking PG until that is on Delta Glider because we are in the Delta Glider. And finally we need to click D orbit so that enable D orbit screen reads yes. Click OK and then press mode looks like twice to get to the deorbit de screen. All right, come over to base sync target GS2 enter. All right, and then click deorbit. So, uh what is going to happen here is the glide slope MFD is going to conduct our deorbit burn for us. 
Uh, since we edited that config file, you'll notice, remember one of the lines that we edited was 108. What we set there is our expected entry interface. And the reason I lowered it from 120 is because I found with this delta glider, no matter how I did it, uh, 120 was not low enough in order to uh, in order to get captured in the atmosphere. We, I, I, every time I would end up skipping out of the atmosphere. So without going into too many details, uh, that was what uh, editing that config file allowed us to do. But this is our angle and our anticipation angle, uh, our angle of reentry and our, our anticipation angle. Uh, I th think that means to the base, if I'm not mistaken. But these are all reentry parameters. Uh, and, um, you know, by using the glide slope MFD, uh, these are all set except for we had to uh, adjust that altitude option. So if you didn't do that, uh, GS altitude is probably going to read 120, and you're probably not going to have very very much luck getting into the atmosphere. So anyway, um, we are set. All we need to do is click auto burn. You'll notice the time to the burn is counting down in seconds here. Uh, this is how much delta velocity the burn will take, so it's not very much. Uh, so we don't need to do anything. We can just uh, time accelerate safely and uh, glide slope will actually slow time down. When it gets uh, time to do the burn, it will orient the vessel for us and conduct the burn. So over here, this white line you see, that's where the, the deorbit burn is to be conducted uh, based on our parameters from here. So there it goes. Glide slope MFD is taking care of everything for us. We'll just sit back and enjoy the ride. Okay, it's burning the main engines. All right, that's all done. So uh, once the burn is completed, we can hit deorbit over here. We no longer need that screen. It automatically enabled the prograde autopilot, so it's just orienting the vessel prograde. It tells us to disable prograde autopilot once the vessel is aligned. So that's fine. We can hit mode. And uh, that takes us to the vertical situation screen. Let's press reset to make sure we can see our trajectory lines. And I will go over this in the next part for reentry. So at this point, what we just need to do is coast down to entry interface around 120 kilometers, and I will end this part there, and we'll pick up the next part for the remainder of the reentry and the landing. Let me just uh, time accelerate. I'm going to switch to the surface HUD so I can actually see my altitude here above the surface. And let's just coast down to entry interface. Try and keep the vessel oriented prograde so that you're prepared for re-entry. Uh, so every now and then, slow time back down, engage the prograde autopilot, and then dis disable it, speed time back up. All right, so we're, we're descending. We're expecting entry interface around uh, 108 kilometers. Uh, technically, I think it starts around 120, but again, it just didn't work out for the Delta Glider, so we have set expected entry interface at 108 kilometers. The deorbit burn, if we look at the, uh, the orbit MFD, it lowered our periapsis well below 100 kilometers, so we're definitely hitting the atmosphere, so uh, that gives you kind of a visual represent representation there of uh, the orbit change, what the deorbit burn accomplished by burning retrograde against the direction of flight. Uh, we uh, lowered that altitude on the other side of the planet, so it now collides with the atmosphere. All right, so here we are. We're pretty much an entry interface. I'm going to disable the prograde autopilot, and uh, this is where I'm going to leave you guys off. Uh, we will pick up the next part of the video right here at entry interface, and uh, we'll go ahead and conduct the re-entry and the landing. All right, guys, thanks a lot for watching. Um, stay tuned for the next one. It should follow right behind this part. And uh, as always, uh, leave me a like and a comment. Hopefully it all helped out, and uh, take care. See you shortly.